right, everybody. Welcome to episode two of whatever this thing is that we're doing. Uh, it's Cecil. Remember what, what did I want to name the? What did I want to name this? I didn't even know you had a name. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, I wanted to name it. Wait, who are you? Oh, With yeah. Cecil Porter yeah. and that other guy. <laughs> yeah, that's probably. Wait, who are you? Yeah. Well, who am I? Who are we all, man? Yeah. Who cares? Who cares? That's what it should be called. Who cares? Because it's this just is it's just it's just one fat guy's opinion on shit that doesn't matter. This is terrible audio already. It's always going to be terrible. Man, it's so easy for kids nowadays to go onto their computer from anywhere in the world and pick up real techniques on becoming a great artist. And I was feeling great about it and how positive that was. And then I thought, why why do they get all of this great technology? If I think that, what must you think? Does it drive you nuts? I look at it a bunch of different ways. One way is like, what would 16-year-old Cecil have done if he had access to YouTube, right? Yeah. And, and so then there's that part of me that's like, you know... I grew up really poor. If I wanted an art book, I had to like go into uh, Borders or Walden Books and steal a book. Or a library? Well, I never went to libraries. (laughs) (laughs) I'm trying to keep them alive, but I I just think it's over. Yeah, I have have, have my limits, man. (laughs) Uh, I had enough stuff going against me as a kid. I didn't need to be hanging out at the library, too. (laughs) But then there's the other part of me that's kind of like, it's also awesome because there's that... If, you know, if you get the right kid who's not just watching cat videos or, or, you know, video game playthroughs all day, if you get that right kid, there, there's a chance that he's going to learn and it's going to progress the industry and elevate it quicker than it's ever been before, because that's what technology does, right? And so if you could get kids to be aware of that and utilize it, that's great. The downfall to that is, is that it's very hard for somebody who's ignorant of art to look at the videos on YouTube like this and pick out what's good and what's bad versus what's entertaining and what's not. Those are two different things, right? So you get kids who are like, I really dig this channel. It's a lot of fun. And so they watch it, but they could be learning in horrible art habits sure. with no fundamentals. And they think they're learning something good because they're confusing information for entertainment. So yeah. you, you may go down those famous rabbit holes and it could be terrible for you. Yeah, I've seen technically. I've seen channels with you know, tons and tons and tons and tons of subscribers. These art chan- some of these art channels, not all of them, some of them. And I go on there, and I'm just like, this is garbage, you know. And it's just like I see why it gets the views because it's entertaining. It's edited well. There's cool sound effects and all this awesome stuff going High on. High entertainment value, definitely. Exactly. And I, yeah. I, and a lot of work yes. goes into a lot of those videos. Yes. And I think that's the thing is these people are YouTube entertainers and they've chosen art as their platform of entertainment. As a young person who doesn't know what they're looking for, and they're just seeking out information, I could see how that would be more appealing to you than a channel that's very... You know, just the guy sitting there talking about technique and yada, yada, yada. Man, it's like reading a textbook. You can't tune into that stuff. So you naturally go to the entertainment, but that's teaching you bad habits. It's teaching you the improper way to do things. It's not teaching you fundamentals. If, if you did the time machine thing, do you think you're better off being Cecil, raised in the 80s, came into the internet how you did, or would you think you personally would be better off if you had been... A a pure internet kid. It depends on what your answer is. Let's say artistically, talent, artistically, uh, artistically, skill wise, -wise, I would be better if I could do it now, for sure. There's just more knowledge. However, and this is specific again, specific to you, just to me, because you consume and and a lot and work a lot at your craft. So, yeah, Yeah, I mean, I do twelve to fifteen hours a day, six days a week, and and that's every day. And uh, and is part of that that work ethic from how you had to work hard to well, go get that information. That's what I was going to say. It wasn't so much the information, but you have to remember that I was living on my own at 16 and with proper fundamentals of drawing or not, 
I had to learn how to make art that would make money. Now, I know a lot of guys that are very technical artists, but don't make money. And I know a lot of guys who aren't very technical artistically and do well. So that would be the thing. If I had all the knowledge at my fingertips and had the ability to go to the right learning institutions and stuff, yes, I would be much more technical. But where I knew I lacked in technical ability, I had to learn how to make myself commercially viable. And that's a skill set I may not necessarily have developed if I had the route to information that I had. I had to learn to sell myself, sell my art. And in a lot of respects, that doesn't have a ton to do with the quality of art. I mean, it can't be terrible, but at the same time, it doesn't have to be top notch. If you're putting it in people's faces in the right way, under the right circumstances, you can make a living. And that came from... And hit a deadline. Yeah. Yeah, and hit hit a Again, lot of deadlines. Grind work though. Yes, because see, for me, it's never been like only take the cushy deadlines. It's always been take any deadline and take as many as you can. So where a lot of guys will be like, well, I can get one piece done a week, and I, you know, that's an eight hour day, blah blah blah. I'm gonna do two pieces, you know, and and that's just how I'm wired. Because to me, I didn't have the skills to earn top money. So I seen the way to earn more money equal just do more work. You have a, a grinder's mentality about life, about work, about getting better uh, at anything. And you, well, when you up and decide, I want to learn how to do X, Y, or Z, like you said, you're doing these really long days to do it. Yeah. Man, I want to be prolific. I want to have a body of work that's that impacts people. I don't want to be that guy who did six or seven pieces and knocked them out of the park because I took, you know, 200 hours to do each piece. Sure. If that's how you're wired, that's awesome. But to me, that's frustrating. I just want to be the guy who sits there and just grinds out a piece and sees the mistakes that I made. It's done. Move on to the next one. Don't make those mistakes and just try to learn from every piece and just cover as many miles as I can that way. Yeah. And I think, um, art and artists kind of get a bad rap of just being lazy. I, I know some artists are lazy, but great artists, you know, I think people tend to think of art as a thing where you can sort of just be an artist and then someday magically you're going to be struck in the head <laughs> with, you know, uh, some magic information that, and you're going to be an amazing artist or you're just going to sit there and all of a sudden you're, you're going to write a great novel and they don't really anticipate how much work goes into it. The, the thing is, is you don't magically become anybody, but people tend to only look at the end result and then chalk it up to talent, right? Oh, you're so talented. I wish or I was luck. as talented as you. Yeah. Depending and, if they like you or not, yeah. it's talent or and luck. Maybe if there is talent, maybe it's just how fast you can comprehend the techniques, right? Like, I don't feel like I catch on this stuff very fast, so I've just learned to work harder to make it appear as though I learn fast, but I don't. Where maybe somebody else does learn fast, and maybe that's the talent, but the thing is, is everybody still has to do mileage. And you look at guys and you go, this guy's amazing, blah, 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 and he's so good. But it probably took that guy 12 to 20 years to get that good. That's the part people don't see. And you know, it's, it's one of those things where if you could go back and look at that guy's early stuff, you would see that you yourself could learn to artist. I firmly believe anybody could be a tremendous artist if you're willing to put in the mileage. Are you willing to sit down and draw anatomy for a decade to get good at anatomy? No, most people aren't. And that's why they don't become good artists. And when you tell people that, they don't want to accept it. They just say, no, I just could never be an artist. It's just not in me. I just don't have it. You, you have a, a God-given gift. And it's like, man, I worked hard to get as good as I am. And there are guys that smoke me because they worked harder for longer. I believe that I could have been anything. If I put the same amount of work and drive into learning law, I'd probably be a pretty good lawyer by now. It just wasn't my passion. And what I'm passionate about is my art. And because of that, I always put the energy into that. And, you know, I've still put the energy into it. People ask me all the time, you know, are you, you know, are you as good as you want to be or whatever? And it's like, no, man, I... 
I just went to school so I could get better. And I'm still searching out other avenues to continue to get better. Well, that's something I always wonder about with you. And that's the balance of getting it right between that and getting it done. And where, where does the, you know, cause I feel like you've talked about it a little bit sometimes where there's some guys, there's like this mastery to them. Yeah, and I there's mean, not there's not much base of work to yeah, look at. It depends on what fulfills you personally as an artist, because you have to be passionate about what you do to get good at it. So maybe not good, but to 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 get to a very high level, you have to be passionate about it. I to firm, stay consistent I, enough I to keep going. That. Yeah, or or even to just there's there's a level that you're not. I don't think you're going to surpass unless it's your passion. And if your passion is to reach a level of mastery then that's your thing. I will always fall on, for me, on the side of cool versus correct. If I do something that I think is cool, then I don't really care how correct it is. You know, I, I care about edge work, I care about shape design, and I care about creating a cool image, but not in those orders. It's always gonna be cool image first. And you're a composition man. Yeah, it just depends. You know, I, I think, I think, the areas that I feel I'm strongest in and where I get the most feedback at being strong in are my color usage and making my characters emote. Now people don't say, Oh, your characters emote well, but I think <laughs> they say, when, I love her face. Yes. Or they feel a connection or they feel a humanity in the character. And I think that comes from being able to really push the expressions and sell in the image, what you want people to feel. You can emote really, really strong or you can just emote i believe the more life experience that you have the more emotion you have to draw from you know it's it's like you have to draw a sad face well i know what it's like to be sad i can draw a sad face but then to have really experienced sadness i think that gives you a deeper well to draw from you know or or in anything with anger or frustration the the more life experience you have the deeper your will is to draw from, the more you can put into that piece. And I think that's one of the things that allows my characters to resonate more so with people. Because to be able to take these fantasy characters that are, you know, ridiculous, really, and make people even believe for a fraction of a second that there's a humanity to it, that's a great lie to tell right there. Right. You know, that, you, you had, that had to come from something genuine, I think. Now, next time around... Um... Are we going to be able to start chatting about some of your projects? I want to at least be able to start chatting about sort of what your plan is, though, what you're trying to build out. Yeah. You yeah. know, more, more of the, the process of it and what you're trying to do with it than the subjects, the content. Sure. You know, we, could, we could do that. And uh, I think it might be fun to get into some of the crazy stories I've had. Uh, oh, definitely. Definitely. Some of the stuff with... Uh, Armenian mafia and things like that. <laughs> so, okay, that is is definitely the teaser then. <laughs> yes. Um, okay. All right. Until next time. Yep. See you guys later. Animals. <laughs> <laughs>